Hi, I'm Paul from Easy Composites, and today I'm going to be showing you the XCR skinning process. Carbon fibre skinning is essentially the method of wrapping carbon fibre over an existing part. Projects can range from furniture applications or automotive ones like this centre console out of a car, or sports equipment. In fact, that's what we've got today. British biathlete Sophie Hopkins sent us this rifle that she actually broke in competition to ask us whether we could do anything to restore the strength and give it a great new appearance. We gladly took this project on because we thought it would be an ideal opportunity to show you just what the skinning process can do, even on a complicated part like this. In outline, the carbon fibre skinning process involves applying a black base coat onto your original component. This then adheres the carbon fibre fabric onto the surface, and that's followed up by multiple coats of clear top coat resin. These are then flatted down and polished to the final carbon fibre finish. Really, the key to success with carbon fibre skinning is preparation and timing, so pay extra attention to those throughout this tutorial. Although we do sell all of the XCR skinning materials in bulk, this starter kit has actually got everything we need to complete a project of this scale. The first step in the skinning process is to prepare the component itself. That involves thoroughly degreasing the part and then sanding it with abrasive paper to give it a good key. Now this is wood, so we're going to get a very good bond with the epoxy base coat. But in the case of plastic parts that you might be doing, you need to really ensure that you get a very good mechanical key on the surface. So that's the surface of the gunstock prepared and ready for the base coat to bond to. But if you were working on a plastic component, such as this engine cover, the mechanical key, the abrasion that you put onto the surface is even more important. Deep scoring like this around the edges and aggressive sanding will really help to improve the bond. Often there's areas of a component that you don't want to skin, such as holes or in the case of this gun here where the action drops in. We're going to mask those using modelling clay, so essentially just fill in all of the areas we don't want to skin and then after it's all cured we can trim the carbon fibre out and expose the original holes and apertures. To support the parts of the stock, um, I've made this jig, and this will just allow us to firmly mount the components so while we're working on them, they won't move around too much, and it also keeps it off the baseboard. The combing here we've not really covered, but it's just uh, another part of the stock that will be skinning at the same time. So I'm just going to make one final wipe down just to make sure that there's no dust or flecks on the parts before applying the base coat. Base coat itself just needs a good shake before using it, that disperses the pigment into it and then it can be weighed out and mixed with the hardener. Now it's very important that you always mix epoxy resins at the right ratio and in the case of the XCR skinning resins that is done at a ratio of three parts to one. In this case we are going to aim for 75 grams of the resin and that will go with three parts to one, 25 grams of the hardener. When mixing any epoxies, it's really important to be very, very thorough. So you're looking to scrape it off the sides of the cup and off the bottom of the cup and mix it for two or three minutes to ensure that the two parts are fully combined. Applying the base coat by brush is very straightforward. In fact, it's very similar to doing gloss painting. It's just a case of ensuring a good even coverage, but not so much that you get a lot of running. So you just find that even spot where it levels out on its own and continue over the entire surface of the part. The base coat can now be left to cure to the point that it's ready to attach the carbon. This is one of those critical timings that we talked about earlier. In this environment, which is the recommended 20 degrees, that will take approximately two hours. While we're waiting for that to cure, we're going to look at the carbon fibre and prepare the pieces ready to attach onto the piece. If you've never worked with carbon fibre fabric before, you'll find it's very, very delicate. You have to be very careful when unpackaging it and handling it to ensure that you don't get snags in it, anything that could potentially ruin the cosmetics of the part you're making. The material that comes in the kit is packed in these clear tubes. I advise taking both ends off the tube and then very carefully slide it out of the tube, making sure you don't snag it on the root. Cutting the carbon fibre itself is actually very straightforward. Any good quality pair of conventional scissors will do it with ease. 
The two hours have passed now, so this base coat has got to exactly the point that we want it to be at. So when you put your finger onto the base coat, it's tacky and you do leave a good fingerprint, but none of the resin comes off on your finger. If you leave it on for a few seconds and remove it, you might get a small residue. When applying the carbon down onto the base coat, you should start from the most visible and obvious areas and work outward from there. That way, any distortion will not be in the most critical places. Trimming the carbon to shape is normally best done when you're actually applying the carbon down rather than beforehand. That's so that fraying won't break into the main areas of the part. To get a nice clean line at the halfway point, we've got the first piece of material which has gone beyond the halfway point and then we're going to lap over that with this piece. To stabilise it and mean that we get a nice clean cut and it bonds down onto the first layer, we're going to use some Fusion Fix spray adhesive. So I'm just going to mask off the main part so we don't get any spray adhesive on the open face. And then we can neatly cut the edge without any fraying as the spray adhesive acts as a binder and also allows us to neatly fold it back. In this corner here, we have the two pieces of carbon meeting together like this, which means if we put a sharp cut in, that will cut them off and effectively create a butt joint. We'll use the same method here on the comb. So we'll start from the most visible areas and then wrap it around the component and have some butt joins in the 90 degree corners. And then the ends can be folded in and trimmed in just the same way. With the layup of the carbon fibre complete, we're going to leave this to one side for at least a further three hours. This will allow the base coat to cure far enough to make sure that the carbon stays firmly attached to it when we apply the clear coat layers. Now that the three hours have passed, we can just do a final tidy up of any loose strands. We don't need to get rid of all of them because we'll do that at the next stage, which is when we denib after the first coat. But just any obvious ones can be eliminated now and then we'll apply the first clear coat onto this part. Mixing the top coat is done in the much the same way as the base coat. So it's the same mix ratio of three parts of resin to one part of hardener. In terms of quantity, it will typically use about the same amount as the base coat. But if you're in any doubt, you can always mix up too little and then mix up more as and when you need it on the project. You'll see the purple of the resin almost immediately turns into a brown. This will actually return to a clear resin later in the cure. Once again, very, very thoroughly mix it, ensuring that you've scraped all the sides of the pot, otherwise you can end up with sticky patches on your finished component. The aim of the first coat is to just put enough resin on to wet out the fabric. You're not looking to get a smooth, glossy finish, but this will just lock the fibre in place and mean that we can do any denibbing before we continue with the rest of the applications. So you're looking to avoid drips and runs, just like you were with the base coat, and a thin application, just wetting the fabric out all over. We're going to leave this now for eight hours to reach initial cure. Now that we've reached initial cure, the resin has gone very hard. Um, that means now we can denib, take off any high spots, and then key the surface with 120 grit sandpaper. With all of the high spots um, taken out, so there's no stray fibers, there's no sort of particular areas that are standing proud of the surface, it's now time to key the entire surface. Now that's in order to create a good bond to the next layer of clear coat resin. So using 120 grit sandpaper again, we're just going to abrade the entire surface. You can see in these areas here that the low spots haven't been fully flatted out. If we were to try and flat those out, we'd be at risk of breaking through on the higher areas. And also, just in the bottom of the low spots, it might not necessarily have fully keyed. This won't really matter, the next coats of resin will bond perfectly well to the surrounding areas. In this next session, we're going to be applying three coats of top coat. Each coat needs approximately two hours to reach the B stage, which is that tacky point. That is needed to make sure that each layer bonds to the previous one properly. So you do need to make sure you've got enough time to see the entire session through in one go. So that's the first coat in this session complete. Remember, timing is critical here. We can't let this get past a B stage in cure. So you must be overcoating it in approximately two hours once it gets tacky. Okay, so 
The two hours has passed and we've just got to that sticky tacky stage, just like we did with the base coat. So it's now on with the second application. These subsequent applications are done in just the same way as the first, with the same mixing and the same timings. Unlike most epoxy resins, the XCR coating resin has perfect clarity and bubble-free finish without needing a heat gun or a blowtorch. That's the third and final coat of this session completed. We're going to leave this now to get to initial cure, which will be at least eight hours before we continue on with the next steps in the process. We've left this overnight and the resin is cured to a very hard finish. That will then allow us to go on to the next stage, which is to flat the surface to remove any ripples and unevenness. So again, we're using 120 grit paper here, and we're using a block, which is very important to ensure that the surface is completely flat with no ripples, high spots, or low spots. Before I finish off the last detailed areas with the 120 grit paper, I'm going to trim out the areas that we blanked off earlier with the plasticine. The first cuts are made very easily because the carbon fibre is very thin and we just do it slightly undersized and then sand back to the line using a drum sander in the Dremel. Now that we have all of the apertures cut out, I'm just going to continue with the 120 grit, taking care of any low spots or any bits that need a bit more attention and putting a safe edge on all of these cut apertures. And then we'll continue on with 240 grit. Before continuing with the gloss coat, I'm just going to use some standard spray paint just to improve the looks of these exposed wooden areas. Before we go on with the final top coat, it's really important to ensure that the surface is completely free of dust and contamination. So just using a damp cloth, wipe over the surface and that'll remove any traces. This final coat of resin is a very thin application, so you should use even less than you were on the previous three coats. As you can see, after this final coat of resin, it's already starting to look pretty impressive. We've got to leave this now to get to its initial cure, which is going to be at least eight hours before we do the very final flat and polish. This final coat is now fully hardened, so we can continue on with the next stage of the process, which is a wet sand to remove any imperfections or ripples in the surface. It is really important that the resin is fully cured. Not only does it make the sanding process easier because it doesn't clog the paper as much, but if the resin isn't fully cured, it can be affected by water. To achieve a completely flat and smooth surface, we're going to work through the grits using a block, starting at 400, then 800, and finally 1200 grit paper. Now we have the part finished to the 1200 grit, we're going to continue on now and polish that. We're going to be using this fast cutting NW1 black compound. We're just going to be doing this by hand, but if you're working on larger parts or simpler components, a machine polisher might really speed this process up. The compound will very quickly remove the scratches left by 1200 grit sandpaper, allowing it to come to a full polish. However, if you've got scratches from any of the coarser grits, it may not remove these, so you might have to repeat the finer grits of sandpaper to allow a full gloss finish to be achieved. Here I'm just checking that all the threads are clear and the apertures allow the inserts to go in. It's all looking good at this point. That's our work on this project complete. As you can see, we've achieved some stunning results even on a very complicated component like this one. One of the great advantages of the skinning process is that you don't really need any specialist tools or equipment. In fact, everything that was needed to complete this project is available in our skinning starter kit. So, if you've got a project in mind that would benefit from an upgrade like this, you should give it a go. We just need to invite Sophie down now, see what she thinks of the gun, and get it fitted out. Hi Sophie. Hi. So this is the stock that you sent us, looking a bit different yeah, than it was before. Yeah, different, yeah. Wow, it feels really light. It's actually not any lighter, but because we put some lightning holes into it, we offset the weight of the carbon fibre skinning, so it's ended up exactly the same weight as it was before. But of course it's much stronger now. Yeah. So all I'll ask you to do now is put this rifle back together so we can see it in action. Okay. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, click the like button to let us know. And subscribe to our channel to see great new videos when we release them.